Hi, I'm Catherine Frankie. I'm a professor at Columbia Law School and the faculty director of the ERA project at the Center for Gender and Sexuality Law at Columbia Law School. We started the ERA project in January of 2021 in order to bring rigorous academic policy and legal analysis to the project of getting the ERA finalized and getting sex equality protections explicitly in the United States Constitution. I'm really excited that Ting Ting Chang has agreed to join the ERA project as our first director. Welcome, Ting Ting. Thank you so much, Catherine. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm so honored to be the first director of the ERA project at the Center for Gender and Sexuality Law. A little bit about myself, I'm an immigrant from China. Um, I moved here with my parents when I was eight years old. I come from a family of really strong, independent women. I'm a proud New Yorker. Uh, I'm a social justice advocate um, and I have young children at home, so it's, I'm never bored. <laughs> um, as a lawyer, I focused on international human rights. I was a public defender and most recently I litigated gender justice cases at Legal Momentum, and I focused on the ERA advocacy efforts with the ERA coalition. I have to say, I am profoundly excited to be a part of this movement for sex equality. As Amanda Gorman said in her poignant poem read at the inauguration, we're a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. And having the ERA in the constitution after a hundred years of advocacy lives at the heart of that statement, I think. We have plenty to do, um, but there's also much hope. Great, so why is the ERA in particular uh, uh, so important at this time? Well, Catherine, I think we have to look at this in the context of our history. It was only a hundred years ago that women received the right to vote. And in 2021, we have our first female and African-American and Asian vice president. Um, so this progress shouldn't be taken for granted. And we, not only um, at the ERA project, but all of us, we the people, we need to be the stewards of sex equality going forward. Um, you know, beyond the ERA symbolic power, I think it's a matter of principle. It's missing from the foundational document of our country. And I think our role is to help to kind of um, fill that, correct that mistake, I think. Um, having gender equality explicitly in our constitution will give us legal protections that can't be taken away by Congress or by future presidents. Um, the ERA would guarantee stronger protections against sex discrimination that we have today and hopefully close that gap between the theory and the practice of gender equality in the laws today. Um, the ERA would require federal and state and local governments to include anti-discrimination provisions in all of our laws and policies, which is really exciting. And Congress would be emboldened to correct the mistakes of the past and to substantially even the playing field for women, especially low income women and women of color. So again, this won't just be automatic. It's up to all of us to give the ERA some meaning. And I think our role at the project is to make sure that the ERA grows and evolves with a feminist agenda um, that's needed to be, you know, become a tool for substantive equality. That's wonderful. Real quickly, tell me what are the first things you want to do as you start this new job? Wow. Um, I want to make the ERA relevant to everyone today, especially young people, communities of color, immigrants, people who have not historically been a part of the feminist movement. I want to invite these communities in to get activated, um, to work, to develop organizing strategies around using the ERA as a tool for progressive change and within individual communities. Um, again, I want to develop the meaning of the ERA. Um, what can it do? What can it change? You know, engage thinkers, scholars, writers, uh, advocates, voices, and culture to interpret the ERA until the build the meaning from the ground up. Um, because we're at Columbia Law School, we are really excited to analyze the laws and the cases that have debated gender equality under the 14th Amendment, under state ERAs. We wanna map out the litigation landscape and to look at strategic thinking around what lawsuits can mean, what legislative strategies can mean to ensure gender equality. So to sum it all up, um, you know, I wanna build an inclusive, intersectional and interdisciplinary ERA movement at the center. Oh, wonderful, Ting Ting. Thank you so much for introducing yourself, giving us a vision for what the work will look like. And I'm really looking forward to our working together on these issues and getting sex equality finally in the U.S. Constitution. Thank you. Finally, it's coming. <laughs>